so good morning guys and in today's session i will talk about vnet pairing especially local or global both there's no fundamental difference between pairing but only thing is when you connect the vnets together within the region there is a certain amount of billing and if you are trying to establish a private uh, or establish a private connection between two vnets in two locations then there is a different billing so we just want to understand what was the difference and how you how we operate it in terms of <clears throat> any customer implementations or where we where we use these kind of things in your day to day and those things we will try to discuss today so what we will do we will we'll try and pick the same scenario but in a different way let's say i have one vnet okay which is of broad we need and then i have another small we need let's say small one right so inside this management vnet we have only one subnet which is or maybe we need a two subnets in other direction if you look at okay only two subnets we have one is management subnet management subnet another one, other one is let's say jambox subnet How many IPs you'll get? Mm, 65 dots. I believe it is 65, but we'll modify it when we actually create it. Right. So, what we will do, we'll have one Windows server here, and I'll have one one more windows server here. okay and let's say here i have a similar sort of structure what we created yesterday your traditional three tier application this won't change I'll just change it to 20. This is 30. Now imagine you have one Linux machine here, or I would say I have those VMs, right? So let me try and paste those here. Okay, this is one. Mm. 
this is another DB server which is sitting in our database. Web server. Correct. And then some sort of application server. Like this. And over here, we'll have a traditional gem box, Windows VM, or we call it as the replacement solutions are there when it comes to cloud, WVD, Windows Virtual Desktop Environment. Okay, so what I want to do is, I don't want to provide any access to these machines over the internet. So what I can do, I can only have private IPs. Let's say this is a private IP 10.4. And this has a private IP 20.4. And this has the two private IPs, let's say 10.10.30.4 and 20.4. I want to assign two IPs for this primary and secondary. So primary will be your management and secondary will be your connection string on the front end where application will integrate with the database. So application will use 30. Let's say if I want to use this as a cluster mode, then this secondary IP will help you to define the failover. Clear? So this is front end. And when it comes to management, this is my Active Directory server or a DNS server, let's say 10.200.200.4. Let's say 50 or maybe 200 you can give. So one of the DNS server, let's say this as a DNS server. I want to assign a static IP like this. And no, 200.200 we can't really give because of the subnet. Maybe 10. And this one, 10.200.200.4. Dot, 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 I hope these two will work with this IPs. So the plan is I want to establish a private connectivity between these two. Okay, and technically what we call it as? Are they in the same subnet? Uh, I'm sorry, uh, same resource Bearing group. Connection. It can be on same, it can be on different. So what the funda fundamental thing is, everything is in one region. Okay. Okay. It can be on a different resource groups or it can be on the same resource group. It, it, it won't, it won't uh, change anything in the functionality, but a resource group, east US underscore resource group, and what I will say, region East US. Okay, now if I look at the usage, so essentially I will I will have only one public IP. Okay. So only this jump server will have a public IP. And whoever want to access it, let's say it's not a big enterprise setup, or maybe I'll not say not even a secure secure environment, but let's say from office or remote places, if somebody want to connect, users will first connect to this machine, 
which has a public IP. Once they reach to this machine, they can log into any of these servers. Okay, and this DNS, this DNS will be used to manage rest of the environment, which is actually a production environment. Fair enough? Yes, uh, can we out. have a, a couple of jump boxes universe or it has to be you can, only one? You, yeah. uh, no, no, we don't have a jump boxes. Okay, so I can't really deploy the VDA and all uh, within the lab environment. So that is the reason why I took one server and I've shown you as jump box. But in real time, what we'll have in, in, in the place of jump box, we'll have that VDI infrastructure sitting at the front end. So that once you once you connect to your enterprise VPN, you need to open a Citrix or your Horizon VDI, or in the, in our case, Windows RTS, or we call it as WVD in Azure terminology. So you need to launch it. Once you connect it to here, then you'll be able to access the rest of the environment. Okay. Okay. So this is one sort of testing I want to perform. And another one is parallelly. I will, I will, I will try and complete this one as well. The secondary, just a second. Just a second. I'll have one more VNet. Let's say rather than Central India, Central India underscore uh, dev test VNet. Okay, so here also, let's say I have two servers, but I'll not deploy two servers. At least I'll try to deploy one server. And what could be the IP? Let's say web 10 10 10 20 10.024 and app 10 20 20 0 24. And what could be the IP? 10, 20, 10.4. 10, 20, 24. Right? So let's say these two are deployed in a different region. And let, let me put it in a This entire setup will be on Central India underscore resource group two and let's call it as region. As I said, it's in Central India. Okay, so now irrespective whether you are connecting from India or from any other place. Right, so your remote office or branch office or your home doesn't matter. Uh, if you are connecting from your place to your Azure environment, first you have to come here. Once you once you log in here, then you will be able to access production. Also for a, for a UAT or a dev test environment, I want to have a similar sort of setup from this VNet to this VNet. I'll have this private connection. Even though if they are physically in a different location and logically on a different different resource group or logically on a different uh, subscription or a different customer environment. In, imagine this is this is not in my subscription itself. This is someone else's subscription. Someone else is using it. Understood? That is also possible. I mean to say, if if this this setup is everything on my subscription, 
this is not visible to me. So uh, this is outside my subscription. It is not visible to me on my portal, but I can access the server from here to here. Logically, physically, you will not be able to see if you log into the portal and you will you will go and check these devices. You will never see, but as an end user, you can access and manage those things. Even though subscription, the subscription belongs to some XYZ company and you are sharing the resources between them, then you'll be able to access it. That is also possible. Global peering. In AWS, I'm, I'm just using these AWS words. Normally, we don't have anything as such called local global peering in Azure, but just for your understanding, I just want to change that terminology as local and global. Local means within the region, global means across the region. Then, any questions on the scenario or are we good to deploy the lab? Okay, I guess we're good. Let's start. What I need? I need East US underscore resource group. So that is the reason behind deleting everything. So if you look at the yesterday scenario, essentially it looks like it looks like same, but the approach is different. You, you even in yesterday scenario, you have a three uh, vnets in a three different uh, classes, and the servers access and everything is different. But the solution what we are trying to approach for today small small variation how you control it and how you operate it. So that's the reason why I had to re recreate it from scratch. Central India resource group. Central India. All right, so done. So what I will do, I will go ahead and create East US resource group. So management underscore vnet one in East US. And what's the IP? 10 to 100, right? So 10, 200, 200, 0, 24. Smallest one. And what I want to do management subnet 10, 200, 200, 0, 24, slash 26. Okay, you will get up to 63. Okay. And other one is jump subnet or remote access subnet. Correct? 10, 200, 200.65 or 64. Dot fast 26. Invalid CIDR. Two hundred. Oh, sorry, my mistake. Here two hundred and dot sixty four. It should work. Yeah. So sixty three. It is part of your previous one, and from sixty four, you can use it. Create. Sixty-four. Right, and then go back to one more production vnet. East US prod underscore vnet one. And what is this? Ten ten zero sixteen. All right, so web subnet 10, 10, 10, 0, 
apps and thirty dot zero twenty four create. The last one, Central India, Central India, Devtest Vnet, correct? So 10.20, Web Subnet, done all the vnets are deployed along with the subnets so what i want to do in, in actual actual real time if if i want to use this 200 server no so for three vnets are there right refresh we have three vnets management we don't change anything for east us production dns you need to change with 10.200.200.50, which is one of your Active Directory or a DNS server, which is sitting in this subnet. So this subnet or this machine will be used as one of the supporting or a management server on the back end, so that these servers work in a front end production environment with the help of this DNS. Right. So if this device want to access this device just for DNS resolution, this private connection will be used. Understood the requirement? And externally, if somebody want to log in, then this private connection will be used. Otherwise, what happens? Every server will have a public IP and you have to route via outside. That is not at all recommended within the Azure or within the AWS or in GCP. Okay, so I'm not I'm not going to apply this setting at the moment because this IP is not active and I don't have I don't have any uh, what I will say plan to convert that server as a DC or enable the DNS configure DNS then I'll come and add it here. So, but this is how we do it. Cancel. So what I will do, let me deploy two servers in East US. Okay, so Windows WVD01, Windows Virtual Desktop or WinVD01. ACUS and from where are here these images are there. Okay. So 2019 Gen 1, I'll take it. What is the size? Let me select this port instance and then look at the size. Which one is cheaper? Obviously, two CPU, eight GB memory. Because Windows Server, if I start deploying one CPU, one GB memory, then we can connect back tomorrow to test. Linux, it's fine, but Windows at least try to make it as two CPU. Otherwise, the GUI will take too much time to load. Right. Next. East US 
management and it will be on remote subnet not on the management subnet and you need public ip definitely next disable the diagnostics if you look at the pricing will show up in the different currency because of spot instance prices are always calculated in usd and this is i guess 80 percent or 90 percent less price when you compare with the actual pay pricing All right for a temporary usage uh, that we will discuss what is spot instance and where exactly we can use it separately done so second east us management windows vm01 i'll deploy one more windows server two cpu will be enough Srinivas, i have a question yeah. related yep. to this user um mm -hmm. Uh, yesterday I created one Linux VM. I was doing labs, but I forgot which user I gave. Is there a way to know which user we gave later on? Oh, on the console you can check it out. No, no. We, outside you can't you can't really check it out. So we have to remember user, yeah. correct? Yes. So you can't really use admin, administrator, or root, those kind of user names when you are trying to create a user use your own user friendly standard user then that will be your standard user and you can always set a password so you, while setting or resetting a password you can specify the username if if the username is not there then probably you can you can reset it if you forgot username let's okay. try it okay let's try and change that username even if you forgot you, you go to your reset password console and then try to give some different username and password it should accept okay Shane was here. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned that you are using spot instance where you are uh -huh. selecting that i'll show you okay. okay so basic here azure spot okay. instance okay. check mark sure yeah. So for this management server, I'm, I'm placing it in a management subnet within the management vnet, but I don't have any IP, public IP address. I don't want to allocate any public IP address. Done, create. Okay, so let me go to the first machine. So this is my virtual desktop machine. Take this public IP and go to RD tabs. Or normally what we can do, if you, if you can't install all these things in your local system, so you can use remote desktop. Connect Windows Virtual Desktop. Here we go. Right, so now the second one, second machine which is being deployed, which is my Or what I call it as management server, right? Okay. And I will deploy one more server, the database one, in production. East US prod DB01. Again, I'll go with the spot instance. The pricing. Is more of similar. Okay. 
right so next will be standard storage vnet production and place it in a db subnet obviously no public ip and disable the diagnostics to deploy the machine okay done so the second server is already deployed you don't have any public ip so only the way is private 200.200.4 so copy if you are inside this window server the other window server is adjacent to this desktop right so you simply try and access internally That's it. East US management VM01. Right, I can log in inside. But the same IP, if I try to ping from my VDI, ping 10, 200, 204, it is not pinging. Okay, and what is my IP? IP config. My IP address is 68. From where I got this 68, whenever I deployed a machine in VDI, go back to this picture. So this is 68. Right. If I want to change it, I can change it, but I need to reboot and I need to reset those things but we'll try and assign the secondary ip anyway for this then you'll come to know okay so this is internal ip of your jump box from where you're connecting from here you're connecting to this machine internally so when you're connecting internally like this it is working you are able to log in but when you try to ping it say ping 200 200.4 which is not pinging but however, you connect it to the 200.4 server, which is management box. So for Windows servers, there will be some internal firewall. Correct? That you need to disable. Even if you ping vice versa on the other side, ping 10, 200, 268, that will not ping. But you're actually connected from this server only so what i will do i'll go to firewall and stop here stop the profile and also the public profile then minimize now you try to ping it it should work see it's working now other side internally if i am pinging it is still not pinging because on the original desktop machine or a VDI machine, I haven't disabled the firewall yet. So let me disable over here as well. Okay, disable all. You go back to here now. It should ping it. See, it started. And don't confuse Linux server seamlessly. You are able to ping the servers here and there, but for Windows servers, the, the internal firewall will not allow you to reach the server via ping. But the rest of the protocols will work it. Like the RDP is now working. If you install some application, application will work without any additional configuration and stuff. But only the ping is controlling you here as a local firewall blockage mechanism. Right, so these two servers are more of management servers. So where is my another production server? I'm talking about this server. Let me go back to here and all servers, 
or virtual machines, prod DB server, which is up and running. Correct. And let's check what is this IP 30.4. So obviously this is Windows server anyway, unless until you disable the firewall inside, your ping won't work. But what I will do, I will try to RDP is let's see if the telnet is working. No, telnet is not enabled, fine. So let me RDP it from here. Now this is the IP. You should get a timeout because you're currently in a management box and trying to reach production server internally with the private IP. This won't work. See? Done. But if you ping it, again, it won't work because the reason is 30.4. Because you don't have a communication, first of all. Even if you establish a communication, RTP will work. This ping will not work unless you log in and disable the firewall inside. Right? Let's let's do that. How to do this? So go back to this picture. Currently, I am here. I logged into this machine, and from here, I'm trying to access this server, which is not responding. Reason: We don't have a peering connection. Right? Once you establish a peering connection between these two VNets, right, you will be able to access the server via this internal private connection. How to do that? Let's go back to your virtual networks and management, right? And go to your peering connections, add from where you are connecting from management VNet, from management VNet to, to which VNet you are trying to connect, management to prod. Okay. The connection name is from management to prod and allow traffic to remote network. Traffic to remote network means, do you want to allow some traffic from like this to a remote network? Yes, allow traffic forwarded from a remote network. So if some of these servers are sending traffic, do you accept? Yes. And virtual network gateway, do you have a virtual network gateway? The gateway subnet is not yet created and the gateway will not present on any of these VNets. So this option, we need to set it back to none. Normally what we will do, use this virtual network gateway option when you are actually using VPN and other stuff. That we will test it when we are talking about VPN. Anyway, we need to create the peering that time also. So we'll, we'll use this option during the VPN testing. This is bi-directional connection that you want to establish. So from one, one side, management to prod, other side, other side, the name is prod to management, from production to management. So this is bi-directional connection establishment. So give that name. Accordingly, you will see when the connection is established, these names will reflect on your peering connection. And resource manager and classic. What is this? Anybody, any idea? Resource, resource manager is, is your resource manager. Is your, um, basically, it's a layer which Azure is doing right. for you. Right. So the resource group and your core resource group, resource manager, and the, these stuff, these stuff, you have got from around 2015 or just before that. But earlier, the the concept is the classic deployments. In classic deployments, you need to provide each and every resource ID to peer it. That is different. In in the resource manager model, you have to select the resource in a pop down list. That's it. Okay. So classic is wherever, not not only in the peering connections, 
wherever you see the classic word in the Azure means that is legacy, try to avoid it. Okay, two things in two, two, two things you need to remember. One is classic, another one is preview. So preview mode is something where you will get a chance to explore the product more and give this give some feedback to Azure so that they'll improve it from the back end and they'll come up with the more innovation in the same product. Right, that is one thing. And classic is uh, they are they are just ready to retire it due to some some constraints. They still kept it. Right, and people are still using it as legacy model because they are used to it since almost like a few years. Then they'll continue to use the same. So wherever you see classic, when you are doing a new deployment, try and avoid it. If customer insists to use a classic model, then we have to go with it. Right. The fundamental difference for each and every component, the classic behavior and the regular behavior will change. So let's say storage account. Storage account has some features in classic, some features in your uh, latest resource group, resource manager model. Right. So that we will discuss when you're talking about storage account. Similarly, for each and every component, there are a few fundamental differences between both the variations. Okay, so as and when we get the, get that component, I'll try to explain what is that difference. Okay, and go back to the bidirectional connection. From where to where, from management to East US production you're establishing and to remote so I'm talking about this connection now. From this connection, are you able to send the traffic to remote? Yes. And traffic forwarded from remote network you want to accept? Yes. Is there any gateway? No. Add. You'll see two connections will be established. One from management to production. Another one is from production to management. Done. So if you look at here, I'm inside the management. So from management to prod connected, the peering, con peering location is vnet1, prod, sorry, prod vnet1. Gateway, we don't have it. That's the reason why it is disabled. So go to other side and go to peering connections. You will you'll see one more peering connection is added, prod to management, which is connected to management vnet. And now, once that is established, even though if you establish the connection connectivity, you will not be able to ping this server, obviously, but you will be able to log into this machine. See, it's working now internally. Here we go. This is actually sitting on production DB subnet. But from my VDI, I'll be able to access this one. All right. Once the server is up, what you can do, you can probably disable the firewall at first stage. Okay, so go to firewall properties. Hi, Srinivas. I have yeah. a doubt. Hmm. Uh, do we need to, in real time, or do we need to disable the firewall? The moment you apply the group policy, the group policy will take care of that. Okay. You don't need to worry about all these things. See? The moment I disable it, it started pinging. From where I'm pinging? From 68, from my VDA. Okay, so one last, let me go ahead and deploy at least one Windows, uh, one Linux server here. So I'll, I'll skip this part and I'll also skip this server, right? So we are not actually designing the three-tier application here. We'll actually try to ping the servers or try to access the servers internally. So from here, again, I want to test test this connectivity, but I'll deploy Linux server here 
and Linux server here on the web front. How to go back to virtual machines? Central India Dev Test Web VM One, right? Dev Test Lab Web VM One. There is a different concept called Dev Test Lab within the Azure. That is different for purely developers. And what I want to deploy Ubuntu Linux Central India, and I don't need this bigger size. One CPU, one GB is enough. A standard B1S. And I want to set my own username and password. Twenty two enough and automatically select web. No public IP. Disable the diagnostics and deploy it. Right, so deployment has been started. So what I will do, I will deploy one more Linux server, which is in production East US. Prod in web VM1. See, too fast. Same username and password. Yeah, I, exactly here I did the mistake yesterday. Um, was I forgot later on I use the generic Azure user then it worked so uh -huh. you need to make sure when you are deploying or you need to standardize those things when you are practicing it yeah. fine but when it comes to an organization what we will do you'll have some generic ID okay normally we'll in traditional way we have this uh, build user or in Windows, you have a default administrator or a, again a build user. Once your work is done, the build user will be disabled and your server will be into a domain. So for Windows, you don't see any any challenges as such. But when it comes to Linux, that is where you, you, you stuck most of the time. So you have to make a note or else you need to keep some repository where you can save all these passwords and stuff. Also, Shinivas, when we do mass creation in real time, say 10 VMs or 100 VMs, maybe we have some template we can refer and see which username we created, correct? Right. For that, we will use Key Vault. Or there is a, another third party product called this, we will use it. Okay, this is from the same company, the Terraform company. Yeah. Right. Okay, we'll recommend this for managing the passwords. The benefit is whenever you want to have the pass random passwords that, that are being generated automatically, you mentioned the logic over here. So every system or every asset within the organization that can be refreshed with the new password after every seven days or every 15 days or every 30 days, whatever the retention you want to set. Expiring, sorry, whatever the expert you want to set accordingly, that will modify it. Okay. So I got all the VMs. So let me go back to virtual machines and see. If you look at, I have total five servers in the picture and only one public IP, which is VDI. The rest of the four servers, you will not have anything as such. All right, so now, what I want to do, I want to copy this party session. So let me copy this to my desktop here. 
on VDA. Okay, I have two more two Windows servers. One is management box. Let's keep that aside. Another one is DB server. Both are both are accessible. And the third one I want to access ping 10 10 10 4. See the Linux server is now working. How to log in? Very simple. Go to your partition and give username 10 10 10 4. Just totally internal. You, you will not be able to access these servers from anywhere outside. Correct? So this is your production web server, which I'm talking about this one. So how I'm accessing from here via this pairing connection, the traffic will go and you will be able to access this machine like this. Okay. And what about this? This machine is up and running, but I don't have any peering connections like this. So if I establish a peering connection, there is no difference between a local and global except the billing. Right. So what I will do, I'll let's imagine this is altogether in a different customer environment. Means that is not at all visible on your portal. If that is not at all visible on your portal, what we have to do, let me go back to virtual networks and central India. Right, so pairing connections. There, nothing is there. So what I will do, I'll go to properties of this VNet. Go to VNet properties. There is a resource ID. Copy this and let's check it on notepad or okay if you check it subscriptions the subscription id resource group whatever the resource group that you have created provider your microsoft network virtual network and the network name vnet so this is your complete hierarchy of your resource id so what i need to do let's say if you are collaborating with third party company they have some vnet so we'll ask them to share that vnet id so when i say vnet id this is what the id i'm looking for resource id so what they will do, they'll simply email this one, right? So now I'll go back to my management and pairing connections, add management to dev test, allow traffic and forward traffic is also accepted and no gateway Peering connection name bidirectional. I don't want to use it. So normally what I will do. This option will not be there when you are using bidirectional name. Mm, dev test. To management. Okay, so what I will do, I will not use the pop down window. So I'll simply paste this resource ID here. Because I don't know this is resource ID. If you are using some third party user, sorry, some third party uh, or the vendor VNet that you want to include into your VNet just to exchange some data, then you will not see that in the pop down list. Correct? Let's say on this subscription, I have these three. So they are, they are straight away, they are showing up. But if the subscription itself not yours, then how you will see it? So in that case, we'll use the resource ID and we'll add it. The moment I add it, what it will do, it will initiate a connection from my portal and other side, what I have to do, 
on the other side i have to go back and go to my properties and i'll have to send an email with this resource id so i what i need to do, tell him i have initiated from my side you use this resource id to accept the connection from your side so that both the vnets will have a private connectivity fair enough shini in this case if they have if they are using same subnets is there a chance of any conflict no it won't it won't allow oh, let's try okay. and do that let's try and do that it's not a big deal so what i will do in in my case both the both are visible on the same uh, subscription so management to dev test just like your normal peering connection and select the proper resource and the by directional name is dev test to management right so rest of the options default as we explained and add it so two connections it will add but if the subscription is not visible in your portal that is how we need to do it let's see ping 10 20 10 4 that is a central india linux web server ip see now started ping established connection is established and you will be able to ping it okay so go to here 10 20 10 4 Here we go. Dev test VM one from your VDA. Now, what I will do? I'll create a same IP address. Let's say, what is this IP here? Ten two hundred two hundred twenty four. So let me create one more VNet under East US. duplicate i'll simply give a name as duplicate okay so 10200/00/16 okay so we subnet 10200/200/24 is a subnet which is subset of this So it won't ask any questions. So only it will it will give you a warning. This is duplicate IP, correct? I already have one VNet with that same IP range, which is ten two hundred two hundred dot zero twenty four is the VNet. Okay. If I go back to my picture here, this is already there, but a small VNet. But I am creating another VNet with the duplicate IP, but slash sixteen. still it is duplicate only because it is using the same same ip range in a different vnet if you want to run both the vnet separately in isolated mode you, we are happy to run the business but if you want to combine both of them then the ip conflict will come into picture now if you are trying to peer both of them you should get an error go here and go to management and then peering connections add peering okay duplicate duplicate try to establish a pairing connection duplicate and add see failed failed if you look at the message cannot pair the connection so overlapping address spaces cannot create because their address space is overlap overlapping address space is this one okay so in this case what they will do they will do the staging like that sorry i uh, what they will do in this case nothing what you will do oh, we can't do anything oh, okay okay it's just you got a four wheeler key and what you are trying to open someone else's four wheeler 
Okay, it happens with the bikes. I don't, I don't see. Normally, if you if you have Activa, you go there, park it, and if you see same vehicle is beside, you try to insert this your key into that. It happens the same thing. There is a duplicate. You don't have any fix to resolve this. You have to, you have to deal with separately. You can't, you can't integrate that into your VNet. Yeah. Right. So let's go back here and review. So what so far what we did, we created two peering connections. So logically, if you see, both are just similar. There's no fundamental difference in the configuration. Only thing is, if I go back to here, VNet peering pricing. All right, so if you peer the connection within the region, means both one and two are prod and management in a one region, then inbound data transfer and outbound data transfer. How much? One and a half rupee per month, sorry, per GB. Means, let's say, if you are sending one GB data from here to here, how much? For this we for this we net 0.7 rupees per GB and this for this 0.7 GB sorry 0.7 rupees per GB means he is sender for this it is outbound this server is receiver for this it is inbound so both the charges are applicable clear and similarly with zone okay so huge pricing leave about the government one if you see the zones we haven't tested the zone concept here but when you send a traffic across the multiple zones let's say this server here in east us sitting on zone zone one what is zone one when you are deploying a machine When you are deploying a machine, you have this option availability, let's say East US and VM6. Now you have availability zone one. So what I will do, I'll put it in three. Okay, so where I'm, I'm placing in three and continue, continue. What I will do, I'll place it in East US prod, app server, no public IP, next. So it will deploy, It will where it will deploy in production app means this server I'm talking about. So this server logically on zone two, and if I look at this server, it is in zone one. If, you, if I'm sending one GB from zone one to another VNet in zone two, then these prices are applicable. Okay, this is in the same region. This is across the region. Means, let's say this is applicable for, imagine this is sitting on zone two and you are sending data like this. Okay. Now for this, this is sitting in zone one. And what is the cost? For this 2.5 rupees per GB. This is outbound. Outbound means this one. And inbound, inbound receiver is, receiver is inbound, right? So inbound sitting in zone two. So for this 6.4 rupees per GB. Let's say this is third party and resource group is different. Subscription is different and everything is different. Then in his portal on after a month, the, if you send some one GB data and he copied the data, 
then in his in his account after a month you will see 6.5 bill will be added and in your account in your bill this this amount will be added that is a costing model that's the reason why there is a split in inbound and outbound fair enough yes yes right. okay so we'll stop here and one last point i want to add a secondary ip right so we'll go back to database server db and networking select the nic card this is your nic card otherwise what you can do simply search for network interface you will get all the interfaces so you need to identify which server it is so db server so this is this is your db server nic card the naming convention is auto generated and this is the ip address so go to this nic card ip configurations you would see the primary ip add secondary ip right so database traffic static what is ip 10 10 30 dot what is ip address 30 okay that's it nothing else done so now if you see for this particular server ip there are two ips one is if you want to make it as this dynamic what you can do just click on it and static 30.4 no need to worry just save it means both the ips become a static 10.4 static R, uh, ssh or rdp ip and 30.30 where we will use it for front-end DB configurations. Let's say application is trying to talk to database. We'll ask database as uh, application user to talk to database on that IP. Which IP? 10, 10, 30.30. Let me see. Two hundred dot four. This is not the one. Another database server. This is the thirty dot four, right? So over here, you will not see anything. If you log into server, you will only see this IP. Right? Ping ten ten thirty thirty. You will not be able to. You will not be able to. Ping won't work, but you will be able to see. Is there? So you'll be able to integrate this with application communication. And for that mandatory requirement is DNS, private DNS. That we will see when we're talking about public and private DNS and how you can utilize that. So that time we can again test it, but this is how we can use it. Even if you go back to virtual machine. DB and networking you'd see primary secondary two ips are allocated let's see if i can i don't I haven't tested this one if it will work on the rdp side or not just a second 10 10 30 30 no it will not.
right so it will not respond we need to specify something on the routing side i guess yeah but the secondary ip is possible what will say right so you can go through this dns entry is mandatory that's what i have seen but if something is modified they keep on changing the stuff so i'll have to look into it okay so with this i guess we covered everything what we discussed initially right so we'll stop here and then we can catch up tomorrow for further discussion any questions we still have five minutes Uh, you're, you're not audible. You're not audible. Uh, uh, Srini, I need, I need uh, some uh, uh, scripts or commands to create a VM and some VNs. Where, where can I get that? The Marshall portal. What you're asking, I'm not clearly understanding. Scripts? I, I, I heard that word. That's it. Uh, I need a scripts. Uh, I need a scripts to create a VMs and VNs. Uh, okay. Available so in Azure portal uh, somewhere. Okay. So if you need a script, what you can do when you are deploying the stuff, right? Let's say I'm deploying one machine. If I want to have the script, export template. Here we go. You have everything. Okay. okay. So this is purely related to this VM. And for VNet, again, that is different. Okay. This is for VNet related stuff. Okay. 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 Right. So anything else, guys? Come on. Anurag, Mitra, Pratik. Uh, Shrinivas, uh, tomorrow what are you going to cover? Tomorrow we'll discuss about the security standards. Mm -hmm. Okay. What kind of security that Azure provides to the customers in terms of uh, standard offering. Okay. And how you can utilize that. And then we'll try and cover the network security group part. I know over your side. Uh, if time permits, then we'll try and test it. So tomorrow anyway, Saturday. We can run a longer session, but I'll, I'll let you know. I'll, I'll uh, let you know if, if I need extra 15 minutes or 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. I'll let you know, guys. Sure. Okay. So Sunday we have the class of Sunday or like? Tomorrow we have. Sunday, Sunday we will take a break. At least one Sunday. Every Sunday we'll take a break. Okay. If you guys are in, I'm happy. Uh, but everybody will ask for at least one day break. So that's yes, the reason yes. why I've, 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 I haven't kept for a Sunday class. Okay. Okay then, see you tomorrow, same time. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you guys.